It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brain Night Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Pudge Sounds head women's soccer coach, Coach Stephanie Cox. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, I had a nice weekend and looking forward to starting the week off with getting to talk to you. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching and college women's soccer? Yeah, um, great question. I I knew that college coaching was always intriguing to me because my college experience was so impactful. Um, it's such a unique time in a player's life where they're away from home. Um, you get to really create a, a unique culture, and um, you know it's kind of separate from the pro pro world. Um, where, you know, there's a really collective sense of responsibility and commitment to each other. Um, you know, it's not for your paycheck. So there's just a different uh, level of pressure. Um, and yeah, it was always really intriguing to me. Uh, after, you know, I was well into my time with the U.S. national team and thinking about what I wanted to do after, um, I got a position as a volunteer assistant here at UPS. Um, at Puget Sound um, back in 2012. And that kind of got me got me started on this journey. What was it like going to Portland, Portland University to play collegiate soccer? Yeah, the university was a uh, Portland was pretty, pretty incredible soccer experience. Um, that was before um, the NWSL before the Portland Thorns. And right away, you could tell that um, Portland was a soccer community. Um, we had some some diehard fans and pretty uh, phenomenal experiences getting to play on our field, Merlot Stadium. Uh, one of our games we hosted um, in the NCAA playoffs and our game sold out in five minutes against Notre Dame and we ended up winning 3-0. So really, really proud to, to have been a pilot and uh, we won a national championship and went undefeated in 2005 and just had a, a really special experience playing there um, and getting to represent the purple, wearing the purple uniform and been fun to see how the Thorns have had such great uh, fans throughout their, uh, you know, their club experience. And I'm not, I'm not surprised with um, the experience that I had as a Portland pilot. Of course, being a Portland pilot, what was that like and getting to wear that purple uniform? Yeah, there were a lot of awesome traditions that um, I got to be a part of and kind of, you know, had gone before me. So some really special players like Tiffany Milbert and Shannon McMillan, uh, Michelle French, who's the coach there now, 
um, a, a special program that um, had been started by kind of a legendary coach, Clive Charles. Um, he passed away in August of my freshman year from cancer. So I didn't get, I didn't have the opportunity to be coached by him. But, um, you know, we were constantly hearing stories of the impact that he had, um, not only on players' lives, but on the community, um, on other coaches. And, um, you know, so there were just a lot of uh, special things, even like on game day, uh, there was a all guys dorm villa and there was a drum squad and they would dress up in their kelts and paint their chests and come with their drums and play during pregame and during the game. And um, yeah, the, the student section was awesome. You know, Friday nights, that was where it was to be at a women's soccer game. So uh, pretty, pretty cool environment uh, back uh, in the early 2000s. Of course, in 2005, what was that like playing in that NCAA national championship? Yeah, that was the goal that we had set um, to, you know, to win a national championship. Um, you know, Christine Sinclair was on our team, Mac Herman Trophy Award winner, um, you know, now uh, world record holder for goals internationally. So uh, we knew that if everyone stayed healthy, that we had a had a shot. Uh, we didn't have an easy path. We um, got sent to Nebraska for our first two rounds, um, but were able to win and come back home and uh, win two more and um, or win one more, I think. I forget. Uh, it's all a little blurry, but then go to um, Texas A&M for the final four. And um, yeah, sports, it's never easy. Uh, we uh, tied Penn State and had to go into PKs. Um, and won our PK shootout and then, uh, played UCLA in the final and UCLA had like handily won their game. And so everyone was saying, Oh, Portland's going to be too tired. How are they going to recover? And we came out and scored in the first several minutes of the game, went on to win, uh, I think three out, maybe four out, I forget, but, um, pretty, a pretty solid, solid win and got to finish an undefeated season, which, you know, that in of itself is, is pretty remarkable, but I think it just is a testament to the consistency um, and the mental focus that we had throughout that entire season um, was pretty, pretty remarkable. Of course, after your collegiate time, what was it like going into the NWSL and getting to play with the OL region? Yeah, the OL reign. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, that was back in 2007, at the end of 2007, when I graduated. So I had a year with the U.S. Women's National Team. Um, there wasn't a pro league at that time. And then the WPS started, which was the second league, the women's professional soccer. And so I played for L.A. and then Boston for two seasons. And then there um, and then that league folded um, and during that time, a bunch of us played for the Women's Sounders, which was just uh, kind of a semi-pro team, more for college players to come and play over the summer. And then after that, in 2013, the, the NWSL started up again. Well, not started up, but our, the third iteration of a women's pro league in the U.S. So that has been very, um, you know, I've been part of two pro leagues, um, watched as a young player with the, the WUSA um, and so very special to see the NWSL now in its 11th year, pretty incredible, um, it's sustainability and, and just really proud to have helped be a part of, of that from the beginning. And so it's something that college players can, can aspire to, you know, that there's a league for them to play here, um, rather than just going playing internationally that they can, um, you know, leave college and, and then become pro players and, and have a great, a great playing career and a great experience. What was that like in that experience, like getting to play with the U.S. Women's National Team? Um, yeah, what part of it? <laughs> um, yeah, it was a long, I had a, a long career with the U.S. team. Um, I grew up playing with the youth national teams. Uh, I got to go to two uh, youth world championships, one in Thailand and one in Russia. 
um, pretty, pretty special getting to grow up um, then with some of those players who went on to play with the women's team with me. And um, yeah, I mean, pretty, as I look back, um, I think in the moment you, you're just, you're doing it. And then um, having had some time away from it now, um, you know, almost 10 years uh, from that experience, getting to represent your country on an international stage um, for two World Cups and an Olympics, uh, winning a bronze, silver, and gold medal. Um, it's a lot of pressure, but it's also uh, what an incredible um, gift as well. And something that, um, yeah, I'll always take with me and those you know, uh, amazing memories, getting to do something, fight for something incredible with your teammates and the the effort, the hard work, goodness, just the, the amount of sacrifice, time away from your families, time away from home, um, to be together in camp, to uh, be ready to give your best and be able to perform. Yeah, it was a lot. Of course, what was that experience like getting to go to Beijing and getting to compete in the Olympics? Yeah, that definitely was kind of the pinnacle um, of my career, getting to represent um, the U.S. in the Olympics. It was something as a, a young athlete, right, that you always watch the Olympics and get to see these other amazing athletes. And I never thought that one day that would be me. Um, it wasn't an easy journey. Um, I actually got in cut in May of that year. Um, and they kind of sent me home, told me I looked tired, told me I needed to rest. And so I went home and another player got injured. So I got called back and ended up making the team and, and got to go. I didn't think I, I definitely wasn't at, um, playing the best soccer of my life at that point, but, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to to have a, a role and to get to go and and our team just really pulled together. Um, we lost our first game to Norway and uh, we kind of just battled back into the tournament and just kind of scrapped our way to beat Brazil in overtime in the final. Um, we had some pretty determined individuals, Carly Lloyd, um, you know, Hope Solo, uh, Kate Margraf, who's now the general manager um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty awesome experience and getting to be in the village with, at the end with all the other athletes and, and know that uh, you had helped win a gold medal for the U.S. team um, was pretty special. Of course, after your playing career, what was that like getting into coaching and first coaching on the professional level? Yeah, the so my first kind of coaching experience was as an assistant coach uh, here at UPS. And um, I really enjoyed my experience here. Um, kind of my mentor, he was the head coach at the time, Randy Hansen, and he took me under his wing and taught me a lot of things. And, um, and I think uh, from my playing experience, I never thought that I would be a soccer coach. I'm not really a, a soccer junkie. I don't watch a ton of it on TV. Um, I don't really have a favorite team. I mean, obviously being in Seattle, like, you know, the Sounders cheer for them. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think that coaching is an opportunity to teach, to teach the game. I like the nuances of the game. I like watching film, breaking it down. Um, and I just like helping players be at their best. So it was definitely um, going from playing with, uh, with OL Reign, um, you know, there were open op open doors, kind of keeping those relationships open to to go in as an assistant coach. Um, there aren't a lot of female coaches in the NWSL. There's getting more and more, um, but obviously they were keen to keep a player involved. And so I had the opportunity to coach as an assistant um, for a season, um, more part-time, not every day, not traveling um, because I had um, a young baby at the time. Um, but with Laura Harvey, um, I think that was in 2017. And then um, also for part of the season, I coached uh, with Lotco uh, in 2019. And um, yeah, got to learn a lot from them. 
man, their knowledge of the game is pretty, um, pretty incredible. Vlatko, his organization, his preparation, um, his focus and clear communication is definitely um, a great leader. So it was, yeah, it was a good, um, yeah, very challenging experience to learn from. And so I'm grateful as a young coach that I got to to learn from from them, from some of the great coaches and uh, and their brilliance. Laura's, well, even then playing for Laura for a bit last, not last season, but in 21, 2021. Um, yeah, just the way she's able to um, get the best out of her players on the field and uh, really help them understand the game plan so that then they can be successful and go out and execute that um, was, was cool to watch. Of course, how did your time as a coach on the professional level help you to now become a head coach on the college level at PU? Yeah, Puget Sound. Um, I think that um, even the last couple of years when I was playing, um, I was just observing the coaching staff, their their communication, um, how um, how they involve players, and it helped me kind of hone in on who I wanted to be as a coach, what was natural for me, uh, what was my style, how I would approach things. And, um, yeah, I think it really made me feel like I wanted, you know, to be genuine to myself. I, I couldn't be like Vlatko or like Laura or, um, but I had to be me and, um, being me is kind of being a little bit, um, more collaborative, um, involving the players, um, in the process, uh, getting buy-in, but also obviously having clear expectations and a standard and, um, yeah, high achieving players. And I'm really um, just excited and honored to be le leading this group here at UPS. Um, they're very determined and uh, give their best. And I'm excited that I get to help them grow not only as players, but as people as well. What was that feeling like when you got announced to become the head coach for Puget Sound? Um. Yeah, it was a little bit of a, a whirlwind. Um, I had retired from playing in November and uh, took some time off and was trying to figure out what my next kind of path would be. I was um, uh, directing at a youth club uh, where I live and Harbor Premier Soccer Club and coaching my daughter's team and excited about kind of delving into that. Um, but that world youth club soccer is, um, pretty intense and stressful. And, um, and then I got a call from the former coach. She was a friend of mine just saying that she was transitioning careers and they thought of me, they needed a coach because the transition was pretty soon. They needed an interim and wanted to know if I would take the position. And, um, so I, I had to process a little, it took me a little bit of time, but um, the more I realized, I mean, I felt bad because I had already made this commitment as a director to my club, um, but I knew that this is where I had wanted to be. Um, I had been here, you know, 10 years prior as an assistant and um, just really admired the student athlete here and, um, and was excited to to take over and um, yeah, there's just a little bit of a simplicity of just one team getting to kind of mold that culture and help develop um, a set select group of players. Obviously, there's a lot of complexities of college soccer that I, I didn't know about. Uh, recruiting um, was the main one of them. But um, yeah, I have a great, a great staff. Um, my, like I said, my mentor, Randy Hansen, he came back as an assistant coach and helped me out um, last season. So that was really great to have, um, you know, his help processing things and helping me through with all of his experience. He was here for 20 years. So, so pretty, pretty cool to have him walk through that first season with me. And uh, I had another amazing assistant coach, Ben Willis, who's um, just so, so committed and helping me with recruiting and uh, yeah, he's the best. So yeah, just, uh, you know, one day at a time, just figuring out what's next and how best to, to help these players. Of course, what was that feeling like coming back? As you said, you were there 20 years prior as an assistant coach, but now 
coming back as a head coach? Um, yeah, I, I, 10 years, uh, you know, before and, um, pretty, pretty special. I felt very, uh, fortunate to be in this position and, um, you know, with my, my faith, um, I feel like, uh, God has a plan. Um, I had interviewed for the job when I was pregnant with my daughter. I didn't get it at that time, but now, um, having gotten the job, I feel so much more equipped, um, to, uh, you know, be a good coach. Um, I feel ready. Um, definitely sometimes the schedule or different things are overwhelming and I need some help, but I feel like I have the the resources to support me through that process. The other head coaches here are really incredible as well and ready and willing to help me, whether that's with an ID camp, um, going through ideas, um, you know, how many recruits to get and scheduling, um, getting out of region, you know, to try and get in the tournament and get ranked. Um, so, so different things. They're, they're great. Um, yeah, I feel pretty, pretty lucky. Um, I have two young, beautiful daughters and a very supportive husband. And, um, I know that this is where I'm supposed to be and they're great support. They're awesome logger fans. They traveled to Virginia beach to see the team play. They get to come on the bus and stay with me in the hotel and conference games and stuff. So, uh, pretty special to be able to do it together as a family and to find an environment that supports that, um, supports my family as well. Since being head coach, what are some of the things that you've accomplished so far? Um, tough question. I don't know. Um, I got the job in end of June and, uh, trying to get through a first kind of calendar season. Um, but I think that, um, you know, there were 32 players, um, that, uh, I took over for, and that was a lot. Um, but, you know, I had an incredible group of seniors and upperclassmen fifth years who really, um, were very supportive, very um, involved, and had a, a strong sense of commitment and responsibility to kind of make the the season and the the environment um, what they wanted it to be. And so I just got to kind of support them and cheer them on. Obviously, a lot of teaching. Um, the style of play shifted a bit, especially probably in the defending, well, and the attacking as well. And so trying to do that kind of patiently um, and bit by bit. But um, I was, you know, the team had done really well the previous year, but hadn't gotten into the NCAA playoffs. And so that was definitely a target for us this year and was really excited when we were announced at the selection show, the, the last pick of the draw um, and got to travel to Virginia Beach and get in the tournament. So I was very excited for our fifth year players who had decided to come back that they had kind of achieved that. Um, that was a really big milestone for our program and, and looking to kind of surpass that um, this upcoming season. What was that feeling like going into that NCAA tournament and getting that win to obviously advance in the tournament? Oh, man. Um, our sports information director, he got um, video of it. And, you know, when they announced it, we were you know, these players for four years hadn't really gotten in the tournament. And so they just thought, you know, we had uh, two losses and a tie during conference. So, you know, they were fearful that that meant that they weren't going to get in again. And um, so then to, then to have earned that. And I remember even my AD was like, Oh, sorry, you didn't get in it um, because she didn't think that the NCAA would fly us all the way to Virginia. That was just kind of unheard of that they would like pay for that. Um, that expense and uh yeah so pretty pretty ecstatic for them um to get to you know get to the playoffs um get to nationals and then even when we were there um we lost but i think we knew that we could compete um we did compete the ball just kind of didn't bounce our, our way we obviously could have played better it's tough to travel um things to learn from for sure but I think going, your eyes are open to, oh, wait, okay, next year we can do even better. Um, the team we lost to, Virginia Wesleyan, went on to the final four. 
So that was pretty cool to see how successful they were in the tournament and to know that, um, you know, that they were beatable, that we could have beat them, obviously quality team and, and they put away their chances. Um, but I think it, it gives us a lot of confidence for, for next year. What does a typical game day look like for you as a coach versus as your players? Um, well, for, for the players, obviously it's about their preparation as far as nutrition, hydration, rest, um, making sure that they're mentally ready and, um, they're, they get to kind of focus on themselves. And, and for me as a coach kind of transitioning away from playing, um, it's about the group, you know, it's making sure that the team's ready, um, kind of that I have in my mind, um, different pieces of how I might think the game would go, what are different solutions, um, to help the team if we're having a hard time, um, <clears throat> to, yeah, to make sure. And hopefully, um, you know, throughout the week, um, we've put information out there so that they are prepared. Um, but you know, the night before, um, going over different things in my mind about, yeah, how the game might go and, um, tweaks that might need to be made. Um, obviously the, the coaching during the game, um, managing the, the roster, managing the bench. Um, but the, the tough part as a coach is, is then after the game, um, because in our conference, we play back to pack, we play Saturday, Sunday. So then after the game is kind of where the time comes in because then I'm watching the team that we're playing tomorrow and watching the game that they just played. And then I'll watch back the game we just played to make sure, you know, what are adjustments that we need to make from today to be ready for tomorrow's game. And sometimes that's a, a meeting if we're on the road that we'll have that night. Other times it's just um, another, you know, if we're at home, it's just another, maybe a longer talk um, before our Sunday game. Um, but yeah, uh, in season on the weekends is, is, is a lot as a coach. Um, and it's, it's a little bit of a grind. You're just in it. And, um, but I'm looking forward to next fall, hopefully having more structure, um, so that during the week, things aren't as hectic, um, having it be my second season. Um, but we'll see there it's, you know, you just want to give your best and you don't want to leave any, um, detail unturned, um, so that the players are ready. Who are some of the teams that you face each week in your conference? Yeah. So kind of our, our crosstown rivals is Pacific Lutheran University. Um, they won last year. They beat us by, by one point. Um, so, you know, that's a, a team for us to kind of go after a, a great target for us. Um, and then we have two Eastern Washington teams um, in Walla Walla and Spokane, Whitworth University and Whitman University, and then a bunch of teams down in, in Oregon. So George Fox, Linfield, um, Willamette, Pacific, Lewis and Clark. I think that, I think that's it. <laughs> What's that like, obviously getting to hoist some of those teams like George Fox to come to your facility versus going to there? Yeah, getting to host, um, you know, it's always nice being home. Um, you know, we know what to expect. Um, we're in our environment, but then also, um, and going, so going on the road, especially in the first season, I remember always talking to our athletic trainer who you know, had been here for several, several years and like, okay, what, you know, do we need to leave early? Um, you know, where's the training room do, you know, they need to go visit a different facility, different part of, or, you know, she would tell me, okay, uh, here at Willamette, um, or out oh, Linfield, like we'll just change in the bus because their locker room is really far from their field. So different things like that, that was always a little bit more um, in preparation. But I think that um, there also is something about going on the road and it just being the team. Um, sometimes at home, there's more distractions, um, more opportunity for interaction, for team meals, for team meetings when we're on the road. Um, 
yeah, so kind of, yes, yeah, some fun memories or a couple uh, weekends, three like in uh, in our kind of not preseason, but non-conference games before we start conference. Uh, we were down in Santa Cruz and we had a day in between games. So um, we got to go to the pier and um, walk, you know, go to Santa Cruz pier. And that was really fun. And then um, during conference, we had a day in between games. So we went and played um, some putt-putt golf at a golf course. It was a beautiful day and got to go do that and uh, go watch the football game. Um, and then when we were in Virginia Beach, we had a kind of a day as well and, and got to do that um, after practice. Um, so, yeah, just different, different um, fun opportunities to make memory when you're traveling together. Of course, what does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes? And what does that official visit look like for them? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's a little different maybe for, for each player, um, depending on, you know, what's really important to them. Um, uh, and you know, we're, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, our coaching staff, what that looks like. Um, we had, uh, a weekend last fall, um, around two games that we had kind of our top recruits come in, like you said, for an official visit and, and get to spend the night with players and um, see practice, go on a campus tour, go, you know, sit in a in a class if they wanted to join the team for uh, pregame in the locker room for, you know, breakfast in, in the sub, in the diner. Um, so just get to get to have that experience, what it is to, to be like a player. Um, and then there's other other players that, um, you know, prospective student athletes that are just in, intrigued by, you know, women's soccer. So they'll go on to the university website and they'll, you know, set up an admissions tour and, and want to meet with someone about women's soccer. And so I may not know a whole lot about them. Um, so that won't be as extensive of a visit, right? They'll just go on a campus tour and get to come meet, meet with me. Um, it won't be kind of in coordination around team practice or a game. And, and that's kind of throughout the year as well. Um, so, yeah, just kind of trying to figure out, um, well, one, who's who's good students, right, who can get in, who can kind of keep the academic standards that we have here for the team. Um, the team was honored with the highest team GPA last year. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that this year, but wanting to uh, recruit solid student athletes. And, and that doesn't mean that they didn't have any bumps in their academic road. I know uh, through COVID, um, a lot of students, you know, had a hard time maybe with online learning, um, but just, um, you know, making sure that they can handle the, the academic rigor of a, a D3 university and um, yeah, and be successful. And then, um, yeah, are they a good fit soccer wise? You know, will they help elevate us on the fields? And that's definitely a process, um, you know, last, even for the 23 class, I feel like it's a little bit too, um, you know, it's not as slow of a process of I, as I would have liked, you know, we're not getting to see players develop over time just because we want to get a class in, but hopefully with the 24 and then 25 class, getting to see players over time, getting to know them. Um, so when they come in, they aren't just new faces, right? That we've developed relationships with them. As a head coach, was it like seeing those freshmen get to put on that uniform for the first time versus seeing your seniors put it on for that last time? Yeah, I think last year with my first season, um, I don't think I appreciated that opportunity by the freshmen as much. Um, I wish I would have... Um, savored that a little bit more because that is that is a big deal. Um, I think my emphasis was on the upperclassmen and on the seniors and especially the fifth years who had decided to come back wanting to make sure that they had um, a really powerful experience. And I think that they did. I think that they all learned and grew um, and um, you know, they, they enjoyed the season and, um, yeah. What advice would you have those freshmen that are entering for the first time getting ready to play collegiate soccer? 
there is a big shift um, from the club game to to college soccer, and I think just being prepared uh, physically, um, making sure that um, you know that you're coming in and making the right impression. Um, for example, we had one freshman who came in and we, they ran the beep test and she was one of the last ones uh, with one of our fifth years. And that was a great first impression, right? Like just right away to show that she was just ready to work hard. And that's something that you can control, right? You can control kind of your fitness level. Um, and I think that then that fitness level and your confidence that way will help with your confidence. Uh, I think that a, a big part of the game as you get older is, a, well, not even um, as you get older, it's massive when you're younger as well, but just the mental side of the game. So have you, um, you know, how do you emphasize your mentality? How do you, how are you planning to help maintain your confidence throughout the season? Uh, I think it, it can be difficult going in with players that are significantly older than you, um, who've had more experience, who might have a larger role and, and day in and day out, whether you're playing uh, during games or during practice, you need to give your best, right? So how do you maintain your confidence um, to uh, be able to perform? What advice would you give those college athletes that are looking to go into professional soccer, whether it's the NWSL or the U.S. Women's National Team like you did? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, make sure you have a great network of support. It's not an easy road. Um, and sometimes it can take a while to break in. So as a rookie, um, you have to find maybe the right coach, the right environment, the right fit. Fortunately, there's becoming more and more teams, you know, last year with LA and San Diego expanding. And then next year, I think with Salt Lake and maybe one other team, right? There's going to be um, more spots coaches with different perspectives and, um, you know, don't let one coach define you one kind of experience where they don't value, um, set you back, right? How do you use your support and, and continue to grow and be humble, um, and take accountability for, for your development. Um, and just, you know, how hard do you want it? It's, it is a lot of sacrifice. It, it is hard. Um, but it's also, it's a gift. Um, I loved being able to play for my job. It was pretty cool to to wake up, go be able to put the boots on and, and kick it around and compete. And so just because, you know, you have goals and you have aspirations, don't forget um, the beauty in the moment. And uh, it's pretty, pretty special. What advice would you give those professional, former professional soccer players, just like you, that are getting into the, the sport of college soccer coaching? <clears throat> Yeah, I think that there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, so just kind of, you know, knocking on doors, but finding the right fit. Um, uh, I'm in my A license right now, and that's been great to uh, get to meet 30 other coaches that are in, you know, assistant roles, head coaching roles, different um, colleges around the country. And just kind of sharing our experience, and obviously there's there's upsides and there's downsides to to every um, to every job, um, but it is very different, right? So one of my friends, um, Amy Rodriguez, Amy Schilling, is now assistant at her former um, university at USC, and it's a very different job than mine at you know here at UPS. Um, you know she had they have a manager or whatever I don't forget what her title is but I that her, what she does is what I have to do um and Amy gets to focus on the recruiting but along with that there's a lot of pressure not probably a lot of flexibility um so it just kind of depends on on what you want um but at the same time like my level of intensity and my um you know the what I want to give to the players is still still high but I also get to kind of choose balance at the same time. So yeah, a lot of different opportunities and, um, you know, finding people that you want to work with, finding players that you want to work with. And um, yeah, just a, a really exciting opportunity to get to mold a, a culture and, and be a part of that and, and impact players' lives. 
What advice do you have those future college coaches that are looking to get into coaching, whether it's assistant coaches or head coaches like yourself? Say that again. Sorry, Brandon. What advice would you give future college coaches looking to get started in college coaching? What what advice would I give college coaches? Mm -hmm. That are looking to get started in college coaching. Oh, if you, if players looking to get into college coaching? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think just to use use their network. Um, so I've been surprised at the amount of people through my playing career that I've known. Um, and so reaching out and finding people, um, especially if along the way, right, you've treated people well and you've done the right things, um, that they'll want you to, to be a part of, of what they're doing. Um, so using your network and, and finding a, a good supportive administration. Um, yeah. And I think that, um, yeah, they are patient, right? It took me 10 years later. Right now I'm here. Um, so, you know, what are you doing in the meantime? How are you working on yourself? How are you um, crafting your style, who you are, um, what kind of a leader you are? How are you, you know, finding out about things? Um, our, oh, I just had our team do a Gallup poll um, strengths finder test. And that was really intriguing to me to, you know, I gave me and my assistant um, did it as well. So to learn about um, kind of my leadership style, um, but how are you um, investing in different kinds of development, whether that's U.S. soccer's coaching courses, licensing, um, there's so many opportunities to continue to learn and grow as a coach. And so putting yourself um, in those environments, finding mentors, finding people um, who can help teach you and help you grow and can speak truth into your life um, will help you be the best coach you can. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program at on social media? Um, I do have an Instagram account, but I don't really post on it very often. Uh, I think it's Steph Cox 14. Um, yeah. Thank you again, Coach Stephanie Cox, for your interview, and best of luck in your future as a head coach for Pudge Sound. You can okay. find Brand you can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brain, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thanks, Brandon, for having me. It was uh, fun getting to reflect and uh, learn. Uh, every time I, I talk about it, I, I learn from it as well. And uh, so thanks for, for sharing my story with your listeners. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.